Hello and a very warm welcome to the National Indoor Arena here in Birmingham. The Yonix All England Championships for 2008. It's quarterfinals day here in Birmingham and we're going to start with men's doubles. Ikeda and Sakamoto, who of course won the bronze medal at last year's World Championships, up against former World Champions Lars Porska and Jonas Rasmussen from Denmark. Following that, we will have men's singles and the holder and the three times winner of the All England Championships, Lin Dan of China, up against Kenneth Jonasson of Denmark, the world number five ranked player. Following that, we'll have an all British mixed doubles and the 2005 winners, Nathan Robertson and Gail Ems, up against Robert Blair and Imogen Bankia. Following that, the reigning Olympic champion in the men's singles, Taufik Hidiat, up against the current world number two, Lee Chong Wei. After that, the second of our mixed doubles and the second appearance of a British pair, Anthony Clark and Donna Kellogg, who of, class, of course last year reached the All England final. They're up against Xi Bo and Zhang Yawen. And then the last of our matches on court number two, Wang Hai Yun in the women's singles up against the number eight seed, Wong Mu Chu of Malaysia. So that's our order of play for quarterfinals evening here in Birmingham. So let's go down to courtside and join Hilary Atkinson. Please show your appreciation for Shintaro Aikieda and Tsuyushi Shakamoto from Japan. So the first of our matches and it's men's doubles. Ikeda and Sakamoto up against Porska and Orasmussen and we're looking at the Japanese pair at the moment. Ikeda on the right as we look at them and his partner Sakamoto of course caused a sensation at the World Championships last year in Kuala Lumpur when they beat the home favourites. He Kukien Kiet and Tambu Kiong to reach the semi final. And they caused a sensation again here because they beat that same pair, the number three seeds here at the All England. Number three seeds, but holders of this All England title. And then they had a tremendous second round match yesterday, dropping the second game, but coming through in an hour and seven minutes. Absolutely fantastic match that was. So their opponents, the Danish combination, Rasmussen on the left as we look at them, Porska on the right. Lars Porska, 32 years of age, and his partner a couple of years younger. 
runners-up in this All England Championships in 2005 when they missed out to Kai Yun and Fu Hai Feng, the number one seeds this year, who have also gone out of this year's championships. We've had a year of seeds falling all over the place. So here we see their road through to this quarterfinal, and that was a tough first match against Guo Zhengdong and Xie Zhongbo, and then no real trouble in their second round match against the pair from Taipei. And let me tell you that that pair from Taipei had beaten the number seven seeds from Denmark, Jens Eriksson and Martin Lungor. In fact, two times winners, though, that Danish combination, and very sadly not progressing in what is almost certainly to be their last or England Championships. Well, I'm Jill Clark, and I'm joined by Morton Frost, and this should be a terrific men's doubles. Absolutely. It's going to be a very good match. I think the Japanese uh, really sort of earned their place. They, over the last uh, year, even a year and a half, they've played really well. So uh, it's going to be a good match, and it's going to be very, very tight, I believe. Yes, well, I think it probably will be tight, and I have to say that it's wonderful to see Porska and Rasmussen back to such terrific form. And of course, they first formed their partnership back in 2002 and then decided to split at the end of 2005, but happily back together again, and they really have been in tremendous form earlier this year. Runners up at the Malaysian Open, the first of the Super Series events, and then semi-final of career so lovely to see them back and they've sorted out their differences and I think they have a real chance So this Japanese combination, Ikeda and Sakamoto, my goodness, they've had a good tournament so far. But as far as the Danes are concerned, well, this return to form is very welcome indeed. Of course, they love this arena here in Birmingham. This is where they won their world title in 2003. Been in an All England final before, so they, they know what it's like to get to these latter stages of this very prestigious event. Ikeda just taking his time. And of course this pair, Morton, have been through their problems. They've had a difference of opinion over the amount of training that they're supposed to be doing. On par for this match, Val Andrews and... Ladies and gentlemen, this is the Yonex All England very Championships umpire. men's doubles quarter final between, on my left, Shintaro Ikeda, Shiuji Sakamoto, Japan. And on my right, Lars Koska, Jonas Rasmussen, Denmark. Lars Posca to serve to Shintaro Ikeda. Love all. Play. So the former world champions nearest to us as we look down on the court with the white shirts. And Posca getting this quarterfinal oh. underway. And Rasmussen doing what he does best. He's a very One inspirational love. player. If he's on the song, he makes a huge difference to the match. Yeah, he, he's the key to the match for the pair. He, he's the one that's really uh, moving to the net. He's creating a lot of openings, creating a lot of winners. So if he's on form, then obviously he will play really well and he will create Two all long. the chances for the Danes that they need. Over one, of age, Rasmussen, born in Aarhus, which is where you're based, Morton. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> but Rasmussen is now at the training centre in, in Copenhagen. Copenhagen yes. yep. Now, tactically, three, obviously one. the Japanese pair aren't afraid of long, hard matches. They're very, very fit athletes and aren't afraid of defending either. 
what, what do you think tactically the Danes are going to try and do here? Are they got to mix up the pace I would have thought yeah they obviously try to play a lot into the net try to get the lifts that's what they've done so far in the first few rallies here they haven't really had to work for it and they've already got four points and as you say the Japanese are having a really strong defense but so far they've been able to drive through them and I think that's going to be the key again for the Danes not having to work too hard serving well receiving well adding on a lot of pressure on the flat stuff and then really trying and go for the winners and we were talking earlier about the fact that the Danes have won a world title. They've been in an All England final. They know about these sort of situations. Whereas I think for the Japanese pair, as though they were a bronze medalists at the last World Championships, in all honesty, they've, they've never been this far in the All England. Only match on court is a very big stage, and I think they're looking very nervous at the moment. Yeah, they've got on to a, a very nervous start. I agree with you on that. Uh, I'm sure they will pick up, but it's, it's a good start for the Danes. It's a very good start. 6-1 in this opening game. Oh, that's brilliant. Good angle. But it was two sort of half smashes first, wasn't it, before yeah. the power play? As you can see, they're playing a lot of what I call neutral shots. They're keeping it low, they're keeping it down, not really adding on a lot of pressure. And then suddenly, out of the blue, the angle comes and it's, it's a winner. Dean Pedersen, national coach. Three, seven. Yeah, slight confusion between the Danes with that smash that came down the centre of the court, both trying to Play the reply. Oh, trouble. Oh, great rally. That's the worst that can happen to the Danes uh, is the fact that they have all initiative, they really have to control the rally, but not being able to finish it off. And it's coming back and coming back and coming back, which obviously at the end of the day maybe means that they will tie out. and I think that perhaps a sign that Five, in the last rally they were frustrated that they couldn't put the shuttle away and therefore going for too steep an angle. That's why he made the error. He moved very well in but then made the mistake. Gained the control of the rally. Back to within two points. Rally. Well, you have to play a very patient game because when you play in, in, a, in a stadium like this, which is so big, it's uh, actually quite difficult to, uh, to kill the shots and uh, the defence uh, is really, really strong. And therefore, if you do not have the patience, you tend to go for your winners too early, then obviously you will uh, make mistakes and it's too easy to uh, defend it as well. 
Why would the size of the arena make a difference to putting the shuttle away? Is it, is it the timing that it's such a vast space that when you're looking at the shuttle, the timing of the, the, the shot is perhaps more difficult? Uh, I think it's got something to do with the timing, but somehow it's also got to do with the space where you're playing in. It's, it's such a huge space. Yes, it is a wonderful arena, isn't it? marvellous facility and to think just two or three weeks ago there was the indoor athletics taking place in this very arena oh, once again going for too steep an angle Seven and in fact eight. saying to himself mm. just falling into the shot yeah he's trying too much just uh, played into the net the, the two japanese were standing sort of side by side no problem he could just have blocked it to the net and then uh, Play patient, play one more time. Yeah. Just one point, the deficit now. Hey, hey. Oh, that's good. Good reactions. I think the Japanese pair is a very good pair. I, I like Ikeda a lot. I think he's playing really well. Um, I think uh, it's going to be a tough match. They will get going in the defense as well. So. Oh! Oh, nicely done. It's amazing, though, when you look at their eight progress nine. over the years, this Japanese pair. Well, they've been playing together since 2005, so this is their fourth year together, but they've never actually won a title. That's surprising, isn't it? Yeah, but they haven't played at this level for very long, I must yep. say. So, uh, I'm sure it will come. They, they are really a good pair, and it, it will come. How much has it made a difference to the Japanese squad, the so fact that, that 10, former World eight, and Olympic three. champion Park wow. Jubong has been coaching there for the last 18 months, two years? I think it's made a tremendous difference. I think he's doing such a wonderful job and uh, he's got the respect from all his players and three. all the politicians wow. within the uh, Japanese sport and I think he's doing a great job. Well played, and it was the initiative from Rasmussen rushing forward at exactly the right moment that really turned that rally around. That was the one, yeah, and a good finish off as well from Porska. Yeah, it's, it's well placed, uh, not playing into the forehand as uh, the Japanese was hoping for, but uh, right at the body, in which was a good, good placement of that shot. So far, I think the game has developed to uh, the advantage of the Danes. Not only are they le leading 11-8, but the fact that they've not been working that Four hard. Two, well, that's an interesting Four start, two, isn't it? For Rasmussen making six out of the eight winners, as far as the Danes are concerned. And all of the Japanese winners, two of the two, totally two winners. Yeah, they are the two pivotal players within the partnerships. Yeah. yeah. What one tends to forget that last Porsche is uh, serving really, Play. really well, even under tremendous pressure, and that means that that is uh, is sometimes the key to a match that he can serve as well as he can. Uh, it's landed on the line. Service over nine eleven. And to be honest, in doubles, probably the low serve, the return, and the third shot are, are the most important of the entire game. Yeah. The first three shots. Oh, 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 oh. 10, 11. like so far as far as the Danish combination are concerned is the fact that they haven't been afraid to take the half chances they see an opportunity to go forward and they're rushing forward now I know you made an error on that but it can send a message to his opponents I totally agree with you and uh, normally they would not make so many mistakes and it, I think eventually it will come right for them yep. 
And what is really nice to see as well here, Morton, is the communication between the Danish players because that has been sadly lacking in the past. And look at it now, the high fives, communicating all the time, and they're playing much better as a pair because of it. Again, I couldn't agree with you more. They, they simply had to split off a few years ago because the communication was not there. And I think forced of you know, circumstances, nobody else to play with, they decided to give it another go, and I think uh, they made a good choice in that. Yep. I was actually 13, part of that 11. decision. <laughs> good for you. <laughs> well, here they are. They're up at world ranking of number nine. Now, that can't be bad. Two-point cushion for the Danes. Oh, dear me. The string's gone in the racket. Could hear it, couldn't you? So yeah. it's over 12, 13. Yeah, they're so tightly strung these days that, uh, you know, it takes nothing. Just slight miss hit and the what string is gone. What sort of poundage are they having it strung up then? I have no idea. 15, 16, I have no idea. Yeah. Certainly a lot more than when we were playing. And that's part of the technology, the advance in technology, because, of course, the rackets now are much stronger and therefore can take higher poundage in the mm -hmm. string. Mm -hmm. 12, 13. <laughs> Opening game, 12, 13. Good rotational movement by the Japanese pair. 13 all. Maintaining the attack. Ooh, around the back. Mm. That was the rotational movement that was so good. A uh, simple mistake by Jonas, but uh, sometimes those shots are coming as well, but it was a simple mistake. There is Park Givon that we were talking about just a moment ago. Service fault called. Service fault called. Service over. Fault mm -hmm. Struck 13. above the waist. Right. Phil James from Nottingham, our service judge here in this first match. Oh, good call. I'd agree oh. with that. Wow. I have to say, some of the uh, definitions of where the wastes are nowadays <laughs> doesn't seem to be the same as our day, does I like, it? I like the way you said good call. I couldn't see a thing. <laughs> Well worked rally. But it's, it's again you see that it's, it's obviously a finish by Jonas with his favourite. He's moving in and he's going cross court on the last one. That's the one. He loves that shot. It's coming so often if you notice. Oh, that is unbelievable. He was in all sorts of trouble. Service over, 14-15. Oh, on his knees. Yeah, good reaction. Well done. Yes, I think so. It would have been a lot of pressure on that one. Even if it had gone back, Jonas could have moved forward, so I think it's the right one. Here he can go forward. There's no way he can get out of that trouble. Back level once again. 15 all in this opening game. <laughs> Set up with a good serve. 16-15. And for the first time in this game, the Japanese pair go into the lead. Yeah, I'm, I'm looking for, for Jonas Rasmussen to um, sort of throw more energy into the match. It's like he's getting caught on a few occasions, not really getting there, making a few mistakes as well. And we do not see so much high fives and shouts and say, OK, I'm, I'm here, I want to win it. Oh. Well, that's, 
That's unlucky. Yes, but they created their own luck there. Shintaro Ikeda. Well, he's taking it early. Yes, and he knows that's possibly a very vital point. Good return. Very good return. He's getting it very high up, very high up, and just a chip at the net and uh, putting a lot of pressure. He, the Japanese was trying to get out of it by playing a smart shot, and obviously he, he missed it, but uh, he should have lifted it. That's a sign of the tension. Yeah. Danish players are usually good for this, so um, they're not playing to the very best, that's for sure. But um, the Japanese are playing well too. Oh, good judgment. Just long. That is over 17, 18. Way out. <laughs> well, when I said just long of that back line, I didn't realise it was that close. Yeah, no, it was really close. It was well, very well left. See, good serving again now. It's getting crunch time. And for last to serve as well as he did there. He, he, can, he can serve the next three and then win 21-18 because he's serving so well. You realise that's the kiss of death now. <laughs> <laughs> I know, but uh, let's hope. That's great, sir. That's see, a good that's, rally. See, that's what I want to see, Jonas, as well. I want to see him being there. Animation after the rally. Clenched fist. Hunting the shuttle down. And two points from this opening game for the former world champions. Service over, 19 all. Desperately close. Oh. 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 Yeah, very good play. That is so well played. And once again, Kira. He's setting it up with that shot there. The drive with the backhand, he's setting it up with that one. So fast, so quick. So game point now to the Japanese combination. Rasmussen is annoyed at himself for making the error, but they were under all sorts of pressure in so that final Shintaro rally. Kida, so they're confirmation Kida. opening game to the Japanese 21-19.